Excuse me, sir, have you heard of our Lord and Savior? Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k, a universe so dark that they're in the goddamn walls! Last time we talked about the Daemons of Chaos, a faction focused heavily on board control and building a coalition force to address the weaknesses in their army. But today, we focus on an army that loves to play with ambush tactics and just never stops coming. The Gene Stealer Cults. Let's get to their lore. Somebody wants to show me what the fuck is it? What the fuck are those? So, Gene Stealer Cults all start out the same way. Some unlucky person, usually an explorer or some unlucky trooper, come face to face with the tiered form known as a gene stealer. The gene stealer, once it manages to separate the poor soul from their group, will use its hypnotic gaze to hold its prey still, then infect them with the gene stealer's kiss. Once the poor person is infected, they are sent off back to their group or ship with no memory of what happened. However, within them lies the seed of destruction for their homework. Once the victim gets home, their need to clap cheeks grows and grows, and they will go out and either initiate a relationship or do the fun thing and pay for it. However, once they do the happy funny demonetize action, the new partner becomes infected as well, and they will become pregnant with a hybrid child. When the child is born, the parents will protect the resulting abomination desperately at all costs, while also bringing in more and more people to their ranks slowly spreading the infection to more people as they do. Through a few generations, the Gene Stealer cult's mutants will slowly become more and more normal looking to the species they infiltrate. Once the cult has reached the generations that they can easily blend into society, the cult will slowly infiltrate their society, infiltrating politics, industrial jobs, military positions, schools, and other places to spread the cult and its influence. The cult will eventually receive a message from an unknown source, telling them it is finally time to rise up against their oppressors and those who would hurt their family. Using weapons, vehicles, and tools stocked up over the years, the cultists launch a devastating sabotage campaign against those that are not a part of the cult, destroying infrastructure and defenses and killing anyone in charge. The cult won't question why, but will happily make sure the planet they are on is taken over and liberated from the previous ruling group, waiting for whatever told them to begin their uprising to arrive and give them what they have been promised for years. Now those of you that haven't drank the Kool-Aid are probably aware of the obvious fate for these poor idiots. But for those that don't, the thing that sent the message to these guys was the Tyranid Hive Mind. The Tyranids will eventually make it to the undefended world, and if you remember the Tyranids video, they will begin to devour all biological life on the world, including the poor cultists who did the work for them. Some cultists mindlessly obey the hive mind and just let it happen. Other cults fight back in desperation while their pure gene stealer family members turn against them. Should a gene stealer cult survive, they will usually begin again, thinking the Tyranids were something beyond their control and just being extremely unlucky. But if they survive, they will go on to repeat the cycle somewhere else. The Gene Stealer Cults of Warhammer are just as much victims as those they wish to overthrow. They scream for freedom and salvation while they unknowingly fight for a horrible fate. Let's get into the army. Now if I hear you make any noises in the middle of the night, I swear to God you'll get the drill! The Gene Stealer Cults are a force that never stops coming and fights in the shadows, keeping their opponents off balance with asymmetrical warfare. Their army rule, Cult Ambush, works like this. When a friendly cult infantry unit is destroyed, you get to roll a d6 for it. On a 5+, that unit comes back at full strength and is put into Cult Ambush. There are some exceptions that give you a better chance. If it's a battle line unit, you get 4+, plus, or 3+, plus if it's also during the first two turns of the game. If it's an elite unit, you get 4+, plus for the first two turns. Then afterwards, it goes back to the regular 5+, plus save. From there, you put a marker on the board that is more than 9 inches away from an enemy unit, and should an enemy unit come within 9 inches of your marker, your revived unit must be set up at full strength 
within three inches of the marker. Now note, if your characters get killed, they do not come back. Much like Batman's parents. <laughs> okay, let's get to your units. The Gene Stealer cultists are very much quantity over quality forces. Lots of bodies that have okay shooting, but piss poor melee and armor. However, you get lots of options when it comes to your cultists, as you have a mix of regular idiots and mutated ones. Your regular cultists can come on bikes or on foot, giving you a lot of movement options and some customization options, while your mutants are solely foot sloggers but where they lack in movement, they more than make up for with their toughness and how scary they can be in melee combat. What makes these units really annoying is the cult icon upgrade. If a unit takes a cult icon, every turn they get D3 models back to their unit. But if they're holding an objective, they just get a guaranteed three models back. This means that your units want to focus on taking objectives and controlling the board as much as humanly possible. However, these aren't the only infantry options you have access to. That's it! I'm getting me mallet! The more elite infantry are your aberrants and pure strain gene stealers. Absolute monsters in melee combat, who, although they lack in armor, they more than make up for it with how tough, hard-hitting, and fast they are. Aberrants are your hardest hitting infantry unit while being extremely tough with a 4 plus feel no pain. Not only that, but if you have a leader inside the aberrant unit, any enemy unit trying to attack them gets minus one to wound against them, making them even tougher. With pure strains, they are just fast hitting shock troops. Any infantry unit they touch is gonna get mulched. But the massive downside of these two units is that they are pure melee and still have piss poor armor. Aberrants have the feel no pain, but even with that, if your opponent dedicates enough firepower, it will still waste them. So be aware of that major weakness. He's forklift certified! <laughs> Did you know that I'm forklift certified? Unlike other armies who get access to proper tanks and vehicles, the cultists get stuck with the power of miners. Your vehicles are all either salvaged cars modified for combat or mining vehicles and transports with guns slapped on them. The upside is with your Goliath trucks and rock grinders, you get fast transports that can carry any unit in your army except one. As well, your units can shoot while embarked on the transports giving you easy access to protect your infantry while driving them up to objectives. The Rock Grinder can even fight in melee combat, and do surprisingly well at it. But the downside of your vehicles is that the highest toughness you're getting is 10, making these the lowest toughness vehicles we have seen in 40k thus far. However, there is a way to supplement your lack of armored choices. Arthur, get out of the tank. Get out of my dad. Get out of the fucking tank. I am your dad. Get out of my dad. I am your dad. Get out of the fucking tank. I'm in a tank and you're not. Gene Stealer cults get access to allies, specifically allies within the Imperial Guard. Depending on the game size, you can bring in certain amounts of Imperial Guard units to supplement your Gene Stealer cults. This means their infantry, as well as their heavier armored units such as the Lehman Rust Battle Tank, the Rogal Dorn, or stuff as heavy as the Bane Blade and its variants. Or you can add in more ranged anti-tank infantry to supplement your forces. The downside is you can't take Orgrins or Rattling units or other special characters from the Guard Army. But being able to supplement your cult army with some of the best tanks in the game is nothing to sneeze at. This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake, not sleeping because I'm thinking about this. Gene Stealer cults have a few wild and varied leader units within their ranks, ranging from the pure support to absolute offensive characters. The biggest leader though is your patriarch the purest strain of gene stealer and although it can only lead gene stealer units 
In exchange, your Patriarch gives that unit he joins devastating wounds, and during each fight phase, he forces enemy units within six inches of him to take a battle shock test, and once per game can double the range of this. This makes your Pure Strains one of the hardest hitting units in your army, and can secure objectives very quickly by either wiping enemy units out or forcing them into battle shock tests. Plus, don't worry about the fact that your Patriarch can't use transports. Just like with most Gene Stealer Cult units, you can Deep Strike, giving you access to a lot of board control and can make it truly a hassle for your opponent. the Gene Sealer Cults, an army that, although can feel like weaker Imperial Guard with a weird Tyranid unit slapped inside of it, the upsides heavily outweigh the downsides. Most of your army can deep strike, and as long as you focus on controlling the objective and just being in your opponent's walls, you will find victory very easy to achieve. And some advice from my friend who actually does play Gene Stealer Cults. <clears throat> If you have no plan with your cult units, make your opponent think you have a plan, and they will easily get in their own head. Thanks for watching, and until GW reveals the next codex in the release line, go to Patreon to vote on the next army we talk about. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, everyone.